Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Nike Hot Seat special guest. I can't even believe I got him. I really can't believe I got him today. But Kerry Colat joins us from his office in Boys Creek. Kerry, how are you? I'm good, Scott. Thanks for uh, for having me on. I appreciate it. Congratulations. The recent news, of course, that uh, Campbell is going all in for the Campbell Wrestling Program. Talk a little bit about what's been happening there on the campus. They say the creek is rising. Yeah, that's uh, that's the term we use around here. And, and um, yeah, I mean, we got back. We had a great season. I mean, our, our season when uh, it started a, a little rough, I would say, and then as the, the season progressed, our team continued to progress. And, and um, I think going into the SoCon Championships, we saw we had a shot at, at, at winning it. And um, so the guys did great, wrestled awesome at the SoCon, um, won the te- team championship, and then we were able to take five guys to the NCAA tournament, which is uh, a first in Campbell history. The most we'd ever taken is two. And then Austin, Cry- I mean, um, Nathan Kreiser, it was his fourth trip to the NCAA tournament, and he finally got on the podium and, and accomplished the goal that he'd been working, you know, really hard to reach. And, and so um, with all that, you know, our, our program was was noticed, and we were getting noticed as, you know, the last couple of years as well. But um, you know, from where I started with the program and to where we're at now, it's, it's been a huge leap in, in our administration and, and all our fans have really noticed it. And, and so that's caused a lot of changes to start happening here. Big changes indeed. And we're talking about a lot of money being committed, money for, uh, for staff. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I believe I've seen this. Is there a position open for an ops director, a full-time operations director? Yeah, we're going to get a director of ops uh, position, which, you know, helps us. And, you know, the more time we can get the staff off of travel and scheduling and, you know, all the administrative things that come along with running a program. It's not all just coaching in the room, the more time we can get into the room. So, um, you know, that director of ops is going to help out a ton and and free us up for for even more time with the guys on the mats and, and do what we do best. And. And, um, you know, on top of that, we're getting a, a new complex that, you know, they tell me it, it should start no more than 18 months at the latest. And, and um, you know, we've had architects walk through and, and they, the things the thing about Campbell is we're a private school. So, you know, we don't we don't necessarily have all the red tape that you would have at a state school. And, and uh, so when we're ready to do something, if we've got the funds, we can go ahead and start doing it. And, and uh, so those things move quickly around here. I hear your relationship with your AD, Bob Roller, is uh, outstanding. And it takes communication for that type of thing to happen. Uh, is he, do you answer to him directly or is there an assistant AD that handles wrestling? Uh, no, I, I answer to Bob directly, but you know, it, it, Bob's definitely, as far as I'm concerned, the best in the business when it comes to, um, in terms of his approach to how he, he manages people, you know, it comes down to relationships and, and Bob's the type of guy that, you know, he, he, he trusts in his hire and he makes a hire and he, and he kind of just lets you do your thing. And, and, you know, he, uh, he, he's kind of a hands-off guy and, and, um, he's allowed me to, to make the moves and, and make the decisions that I need to make to get this program in the right place. And, and um, he came out to the NCAA tournament with us and sat in the warm-up room. And you know how those warm-up rooms get. It's hot and it stinks and it smells. And he sat in there all day long just watching us warm guys up and out on the mat and then sit back in the room for another two hours and warm them up and do it all over again. And so he's in the thick of it. And um, what I like about him is he, you know, not every AD is a wrestling guy. Bob didn't really know much about wrestling. And, and he's learned it and, and, and learned to love it. And, and probably the biggest thing is he, he you know, People don't really know until they're in the trenches. He respects what we do with, with um, you know, the warm ups and the you know the, managing your weight and and staying on top of school. So he's he's I think he's gained a lot of respect for what we do and and we really respect him. But yeah, like I said, uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's the best in the business when it comes to having a boss. Well, he has tremendous respect for your staff, including Garrett Kiley, Evan Henderson, Scotty Sentez. This has been. Uh, not a slow build at all. I mean, next month you will celebrate your third year. And that, yeah. that to me, I mean, when you think about having the first year where you had the literally uh, four foot five weights, now you're starting a season with 50 or so athletes and, and boiling it down, whittling it down, if you will, into, into the upper 30s. It's, it's almost an embarrassment of riches. But with that, comes a, a commitment and a responsibility to turn those athletes into division one all america status or have those abilities anyway yeah yeah it's um you know campbell's unique and in, in uh when i was when i was uh, looked at the job and, and was interviewing for it you know i had my questions and one of the things that they say about this this school is that they call themselves a school of opportunity 
And, um, you know, and that's kind of how we looked at some wrestlers, you know, like, Hey, if you, if you, if you got a, a solid work ethic and you, and you've got decent grades and, and, um, you're willing to come and do the work, we'll give you a, a shot. And so we start with high numbers. It obviously dwindles down. Division one wrestling is not for everybody. Um, but for the most part, we've given kids chances and we've had some kids walk on and really surprise us. Um, just like we've recruited and had some kids not, you know, do what we thought they would do. I mean, um, so it, it's a good mix and a good balance with what we got going on here and, and, and the school attracts them. You know, you say division one wrestling is not for everybody. I know who it is for it. Zach Barnes, Zach Barnes out of the state of Iowa. Has he been on your radar for a while? And how did you get Zach Barnes? Well, you're only as good as the people you put around you and, and, uh, you know, you don't do it on your own. So I, I was fortunate this year. I, uh, I changed my staff out and, uh, I got lucky with the guys that I got in, um, and they're great recruiters. And so, and so Zach, you know, I, I, I got to know Zach over the re- process of recruiting him. Um, but you know, that connection was made through one of my assistants, Garrett Kylie. He's a, he's an Iowa native. So, you know, because of those connections that he has, we were able to, to talk to some kids out there and just like I have connections in Pennsylvania and other States and Sentez and other States. And, and so because of that, you know, we, we, Zach uh, took a look at us, liked what he saw, liked the, you know, the direction of the program and where we're going. And, and uh, we feel fortunate to have him coming on board next year. All of us at Takedown are following you on Twitter. Uh, we're getting the press releases. In this case, let's go to that uh, most recent um, opinion you stated and that uh, you would like to get rid of the redshirt season. Why? Well, I think as a coach, you know, you, what happens is with, with wrestling, we're, we're unique. You know, we're a unique sport. We're not like other sports. And, and um, we can't substitute guys the way other programs could substitute. I mean, to give you an example, like somebody had used it at baseball. You know, the, the guy might be an outfielder, uh, but something happens to your third baseman. You could, you could slide that guy up. Well, I don't, if my 25-pounder goes down, my heavyweight can't fill in for him. And, you know, with the red shirting system right now, it, it really creates a divide between the team. You have starters and non-starters. As much as you don't say it, you wind up managing two different teams. And what I'm saying is these kids do better when they're in the action. We've said forever, like, if you want to keep kids off drugs in the streets or schools or anything else, get them involved in sports. Well, what happens with these these red shirts is they, they have too much idle time and, and not that they're doing bad things, but – you know, why not have them involved? Why not have a kid where we can substitute for a dual me and it doesn't count against this year? And, and why don't we move down the road of counting postseason? So you get five years to complete four postseasons and uh, you can substitute a kid out and, and for the dual meet sis, sis, season. I think it'd be really great for fans. You know, we might have, um, you know, Mark Hall might still I mean, he won the NCAA title, but he may he may have not used this postseason had Sanderson thought he could get it done without him. Um, you know, and, and they showed they, they might have been able to do it without him. And, uh, you know, he could have just used a dual meet season this year and uh, and then come back the following year with postseason. I think I think the only criticism people have is they think it's going to be this extreme um, transition between a dual meet team and a championship team. And it's it really won't with RPI and what's in place. You can't run out and use one guy for an entire dual meet se- season and then stick somebody at the end. I mean, you could do it. Um, but that kid could cost you a, a bid for your conference. Um, you better be sure he can get himself the national. So we wouldn't see a drastic change. All I'm saying is this would eliminate the the forfeits that the smaller programs face. Penn State's got numbers. Ohio State's got numbers. Iowa's got numbers. But some of these smaller programs have caps. They have Title IX caps they have to, to maintain. Um, I'll give you an example. I mean, I coached with Dennis Papadato, so up in, in uh, He's at Hofstra now. He's got a 20-man roster cap. You know, so if he recruited a whole group of new guys, he might be red shirt and 10 guys that, that could that possibly happen and he can't use them. And I just think um, we need to start looking at wrestling as a unique sport. You can't substitute. And I think um, with the transitions that uh, have happened in, in college athletics with Title IX and things of that nature, I think I think the NCAA needs to come back and just maybe look at it. Uh, it it's worth examining as far as I'm concerned. Gary Collat, our guest in the Nike hot seat today. It seems like the number one topic in St. Louis Kerry, was official reviews, and I think you know where I'm going with this. Uh, an official makes a call, a coach challenge, challenges the call. In your opinion, should there be a change, and if so, would it be? I don't want to be leading here, so I'll just ask you open. Uh, if there should be a change, what should it be? It, sh- it should be an independent party that should review. I mean, you, we shouldn't have the guy who made the call on the mat, even with it and, and with the second official with him. The guys on the mat shouldn't do the review. They should they should put it in the hands of somebody else. Look, I, I don't I don't think there's any coach in the United States that has a problem with the mistake. 
we don't have a problem with with a, a bad call. Um, th those happen. And the review process is, is supposed to give us all the opportunity to say, hey, let's go back and make sure we, we got the right call. But you're asking a guy who could be in a, a situation. Well, it could be a situation where you, it, the match could be in the, the semis of the NCAA tournament. And this call determines whether it goes to overtime or not. I mean, let's take the pressure off of that guy. There's already enough. And let's just get an independent review out there who can who can look at it without emotion and just review that segment of the match. I mean, that's that's the fairest way and the best way to do it. When asked, and, and I'm asked frequently uh, as far as uh, athletics, uh, athletic directors, uh, who should be on the short list as they start searching for new coaches. Um, obviously, you've been on a short list for me for a long time. Now I'm taking you off because it appears that you are very, very comfortable with the commitment the university has, with the, uh, the fact that you're attracting high-level student-athletes. Uh, accomplished young people that uh, are only looking to get better. So with the success you've had there and prior, have you been contacted by other schools for employment? I mean, you, you, I, I've been reached out to, and, and obviously you have boosters that, that like to support their alma mater, and, I, and I, I've received some calls. But, you know, I, I got here three years ago. We're, we're, we're doing some things here, and, and I'm committed to Campbell. But, you know, look, I'm very fortunate. I have a, a an AD and, and a president and and a business manager and, and student body. I mean, I walk across campus here and I've got students that walk up and say, congratulations, coach. I mean, so I, I, it's crazy for me to walk from a situation like this because um, as far as I'm concerned, I got it good. I got it good with support. And um, and that's the biggest thing. You can't be successful without support. And, and that support starts with the administration. It doesn't start anywhere else. You know, you need you need the tools to go and get it done in uh, in today's arm race arms race that we have going on with wrestling and and um, so I have the tools and Campbell's fully committed to their wrestling program and so we may be small in nature but we're a big program that's on the rise as far as I'm concerned. Ton of athletic offerings as well. Campbell is well situated to be a great place for an education, beautiful part of the country. Um, I'm going to disagree with you though. It doesn't What's start that? with the administration. I think it starts with your wife. I think yeah. Aaron, I think Aaron needs to be happy. I think that Zoe and Gracie and Ryder all need to be happy. And because when you're when you have a happy life at home, it's much easier to go to work and get the job done. And Carrie, yep. you're getting it done. Trying to. We're trying to. We got we got a lot more to do. We had a like I said, it was a great season, a lot of first for uh, our program's history, and um, now it's just it, it creating a tradition here of. Of guys on the podium and obviously you know we we finished eighth this year with the guy on the stand and now you know is getting somebody to the top and and showing the the best guys that that you know you can come to campbell and compete but i feel good about the recruits we got i feel like we got the best guys you know and and um zach's just one of the guys you mentioned but we've got quite a few other that are coming here and they're coming here to be national champions so yeah i mean uh, i i'd like to say our future is bright you were a two-time division one champ yourself carry four-time all-american I want to ask you about the Sydney Olympics. Um, yeah. What are your memories of the Sydney Olympics? Uh, not good, most of them. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> um, no, I mean, people ask me that question. Obviously, you, you know, Scott, you're so in in the in the not really in the moment. I was so focused on on my wrestling, my weight cutting, making sure everything was right going into the games and the start of the games and. And uh, so I didn't really watch any other sports. And, and um, maybe if I look back, maybe that that, that might have been something I should have done and relaxed my mind a little bit. But I felt good going into it. But for me, everything's kind of a blur after the protest. And, and um, you know, I was on a plane coming home and and uh, was sitting back in my living room, like, you know, probably three days after it happened. And, and I'm just kind of shocked at what what it, what had just happened to me at, at, at the game. So I, my memories are, are, are blurry and vague at both at best. Got to believe your World Cup. uh Gold medal memories are a little sharper, perhaps, being a three-time World Cup gold medalist. Also, yeah. uh, you won silver and bronze at the world level. Just your opinion. Take the temperature of, of wrestling. We just added two more weights per discipline, men's and women's and Greco. Uh, what are your thoughts on the regrowing of wrestling internationally? Um, I mean, they've definitely, they've definitely made steps to where it's better than the, the time period that I wrestled or the guys before me wrestled in, in, in terms of, of some of the things that happened. But I still, I mean, look in Rio, we still found situations where there, there's still some people getting in the mix and there's some, uh, some mismanagement of officials and who's officiating what. And, and, uh, so it's not, it's not fixed yet and they need to be, 
kept honest in, in today's world now with, with uh, social media and the internet and stuff, things can be exposed a lot faster and, and changes can happen quicker. And, and I, I, we got to stay on these guys because I, I know for, I, I know for a fact, if you just back off and let them sit there, that they'll do it all over again. It will start all over again. And, and the driving force behind that is, is um, you know, it's, it's some of these other countries being a world champion or Olympic gold medalist in wrestling is a big deal. And, and it's a payday for them. And anytime that payday is big enough, they'll, they'll do things to make sure they, they secure a gold medal. So we need to stay on it. I think the, the drug testing needs to continue to keep getting better and, and uh, just keep them honest. You know, your name is synonymous, your performance, uh, your, your, uh, as a, as a competitor now as a coach uh we're looking to you for that excellence that you've been able to to exhibit and I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about what's going on at Campbell uh it's it's an interesting time as wrestling uh continues to grow I, I would ask that you comment on one young man that um uh, we, we've seen excellence out of Jordan Burroughs now for a number of years but now we're seeing this young phenom in uh uh Snyder, what can you tell us about Snyder? He it, it, it just seems to be a perfectly built uh, wrestler or athlete, at least for wrestling. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Kyle, I mean, Kyle's crazy good. I I, I laugh because I, I worked out with Kyle when he was still in high school. I think it was his junior year or senior year, and he was weighing about 220. And I, I could actually almost wrestle him. And, and then, you know, it was like two years later, three years later, he's winning the world championship. And his he has jumped leaps and bounds, and, and the biggest thing about it is, I always tell you, once you, once you earn a medal at the highest level of, of wrestling, your mindset just goes to a different place, and it just opens up. And and you can see he, he wrestles with great poise. He wrestles like he's been doing it for, for 40 years, and, and uh, you know, nobody's unbeatable. I know that, but, man, he's, he's, he's right now, he's an unstoppable force, and, and he's just going to continue to get better as long as his body stays healthy and he doesn't get distracted because – I mean, I can promise you he's being pulled in 50 different directions, everybody trying to, to take a piece of him and pull him here or there. And, and, um, but if he can stay focused, his future is bright, and, and um, he's really going to help you know, take us as a team to the next level as well. Do you feel a responsibility to America's youth in our sport? And, and there's a side note to this, is a, an addendum, if you will. The reason I ask is because there are so many downloads of your videos on YouTube I mean, thousands and thousands of people have watched and tried to break down what you teach, try to emulate what you've, what you've uh, given clinics on. Or, do you have a sense of responsibility in that to share your knowledge? Yeah, uh, uh, of course. You know, I mean, we've been putting those up there for a while now, and and um, you know, I I think it's great when I I meet people now, I'll be walking places, and they know me from my YouTube videos. You know, so it's pretty <laughs> pretty crazy, and, and uh, I'm surprised at how well they took off. I think it's a mix between uh, you know the the youth in wrestling and and guys in MMA now with it's it exploding and and trying to learn wrestling, and so. Um, yeah, I mean, we did that. Me and my partner did that in 2007. We, we launched that and, and, um, it's amazing how it's, it's taken off and, and, and I'm glad I can help people who are just getting started. I'll tell you what it's done. It's helped build the legend that is Kerry Colat and Kerry, it's great to have you on the show today. It's, uh, outstanding to have you in, in the Nike hot seat. I truly appreciate the time. Anybody you want to thank, uh, on the way out? Uh, I mean, just just pretty much, you know, my my family and, and the guys on the team who are also my family, my staff. I mean, it's it's like I said, it, it, you're, you're only as good as the people you're surrounded by. And I'm surrounded by good people. So my job gets easier, you know, and as long as the recruits keep buying in and the guys on the team keep buying in, it, it, it's easy to coach under these conditions. And, and now it's just every year, you know, achieving more than what you did the previous year. And if you if you fall short, you, you find out why you fell short and you fix it. And and those are the kind of people we have around us right now. So. You know, like I said, we're, we're, the future looks bright, and we just keep on building. Freak Show continues with this guy. Dude is good, good, good. Kerry Collette, thank you so much. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. For all of us at Takedown, thanks for watching.